the rover brilliant but it is bleak and it is brutal mm. <laughs> i struggle to wait for a redeeming moment in it how was it making it that's fine. i mean i'm talking to everyone and they're all <laughs> saying how bleak it is but i mean my part in my head you know he's kind of he's had such a terrible life before <laughs> the story starts but this is actually the kind of the happiest moment that he's had um you know, to, he has had to, a terrible life. And to, to me, it's just a, a little road trip with a new friend. <laughs> there, there is definitely that sense that he sees the Guy Pierce, Pierce character as his new friend, and he sort of starts almost to come out of himself. Yeah, I mean, I think it's. Uh, I think uh, he's my guy as a. He's just been so profoundly bullied by people. He hasn't even really known another aspect of his life. People, you know, whenever he's opened his mouth. Uh, People would just tell him to shut up or slap him like, his whole life. And even though Guy in this very, Guy and Eric, <laughs> in this uh, very aggressive way, but he actually gives him a little bit of self-esteem because he's forcing him to speak up for himself um, it, or just think for himself. I think the mechanism uh, Ray has uh, for thinking is <laughs> he's, just never, he's just been a dog following people around, so it's kind of very satisfying for him to try and please someone else. Was it satisfying to play? Definitely, it's one like really fun part. Kind of, there were no particular parameters of how to play it, and so you could just turn up at work having absolutely no idea what what you're going to do. And uh, especially with Guy, I never had any idea what Guy was going to do either. So it's pretty exciting to play. And this film couldn't be more different in that sense from Twilight, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't, <laughs> it couldn't really be more different. Yeah, <laughs> uh, do you, it's hard to see, or, or do you anticipate? your audience from Twilight coming across with you or in a way are you looking to sort of end that relationship? No, not at all. I mean, but I mean, I never tried to get an audience in the first place. I mean, it's sort of just all been luck and, um, you know, I just kind of, I thought the, the movie was interesting, well, the, the first Twilight I thought was, there was something interesting about it. And also I was just, you know, I was auditioning for everything. <laughs> it's just like you're doing the jobs you get um, and then, you know, making the most of them. Uh, and I've, I don't know I think it's impossible to think about what an audience wants um, I can't really think what anybody wants I mean my only I, you always think if you if you're doing stuff for the right reasons um, you know just kind of challenging movies that you know you're not doing it for just money or something a kind of thin reason then hopefully at least one other person will like it <laughs> but you can't predict what an audience is going to do ever really i mean at any point did you yourself see where twilight was going in terms of what it would do for you no i still don't really know what's done for me to be honest i mean <laughs> like, i mean i guess i think i kind of uh, i tried to I, I got a little bit detached um as it started really exploding because i didn't want to go crazy and so you know, you know i was more of a spectator to the whole situation um yeah, and it didn't. Yeah, it was a sort of um, a bystander. Um, and when you look at it from that bystander point of view, I mean, do you regard it as a sort of bittersweet experience for you? I mean, obviously, it made you a lot of money. It's that giving was you a great. degree of power. Oh, it was, it was the whole experience was really great, um, and the movies are really fun to do as well. I mean, the whole situation is just like it's funny seeing. I mean, I can't even believe half the stuff that that happened. I mean, like being in the the Munich Olympic Stadium when I was like. 22 years old and there's like 40,000 people just we're supposed to do like a Q&A and there's 40,000 people just screaming and you're like what is going on I mean all these absolutely bizarre experiences which very very few people would ever experience um no it was like super 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 fun but intense <laughs> and how did you stop yourself from going crazy as you put it I, I just thought the surreality of the whole situation I mean you know I didn't even really set out to be an actor when I was, I didn't even do drama GCSE. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like, in fact, my drama teacher told me not to do it. <laughs> like, You're managing, and, uh, it's going okay. So it just seemed like, yeah, the craziest thing in the world. And, and now, you know, when you're afforded the opportunity to do it, I'm basically just recreating my DVD shelf from when I was 17, like working with people <laughs> who I liked when I was a kid. And that fame, which for you was at an extraordinary level. I mean, it's mm -hmm. fair to say you're quite popular with the young ladies. I mean, has that been a sort of blessing or a burden, would you say? 
I mean, to be honest, I don't even really know. I mean, you kind of there are definitely some kind of fun aspects of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a kind of mixture. I mean, I'm not sure what it's done really professionally. I mean, because I mean, I guess I was I was working before. I mean, you just sort of audition for stuff. I mean, I'm not entirely sure if it's even easier to get jobs. <laughs> I mean, you still have to audition for that for this. I'm still but auditioning I, for it. I suppose you you are in a position to call up if you fancy doing something now, which presumably you weren't in the beginning. I mean, not really, because the people you really want to work with wouldn't want to do it for that reason anyway. I mean, I guess you can get financing for. You know, if I wanted to do a movie which looked almost identical to Twilight, <laughs> I'd probably get financing for it from someone. But uh, the people I want to work with, still, you know, I haven't, I haven't proved myself in in too many different environments. So um, I would want people to want to audition me. Um, so I guess yeah, it hasn't really changed that much, really. In terms of, I suppose, you know, th th there's not a great deal of sympathy for film stars, I suppose, who are hounded mm -hmm. by whether it's thousands of young girls or the paparazzi mm -hmm. but I mean it is presumably living through it quite tricky at times yeah I mean but you know everyone's got a uh, kind of lame aspects of their life <laughs> I mean but the, what I've I realized over the last few years because I, I if you complain about something the vitriol which you get back from it when they're like how dare you complain about something I think what people don't get is like, I think uh, actors will say something in an interview when they're just basically like bitching and moaning about like, in the same way you bitch and moan about any job, but you don't really realise, I think a lot of the time people don't realise they're actually doing an interview. But so, it sounds uh, as if it's quite difficult even, you know, you, you, you to find somewhere to live where you weren't hounded. Yeah, I mean that's one of the annoying things about that, because like, you can't really live in London because people stay outside your door. There, there aren't really gated communities <laughs> in London, um, which has made my life like profoundly different in LA. Like When I had people waiting outside my house, I was losing my mind. Um, and now it's kind of... What is that feeling like at that moment? You're sitting in your own home. Uh, yeah, you, you're, you're in, in prison. And it's kind of... Uh, it's great because it's like, you have like five cars of people outside your house and they lift 24 hours a day. It's cra like crazy, um, and you're so helpless to it as well. And I think also just being like a guy, like it's so emasculating. Like to the fact that like there's a bunch of guys who can look at you and say and do whatever they want to, and you can't do anything. And like all you want to do is punch them in the face, <laughs> and like and that's what they want. In what sense? That you mean guys goad you? Oh yeah, hundred percent. And like uh, I mean, that's literally the only thing they want. And uh, it's, it's having it's, it's stalkers with cameras and. Uh, you know, they're saying, oh, I'm not a stalker, I'm a paparazzi. It's like, oh, <laughs> that makes a massive difference. Um, and, uh, yeah, but, you, you know, you kind of you figure out ways to deal with it. And then, uh, like, I just don't get, I don't go out anywhere where I can get photographed anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, that must be incredibly limiting. It is, but it's the, the anxiety you get rid of, you know, not looking over your shoulder all the time, it's just... I'm so much more calm than I was like two years ago. Isn't that still a bit like being in prison then? Yeah, but it's a prison of your choosing. <laughs> and everyone's got some kind of prison. Um, and like, you know, it's much, you know, uh, I like my prison to be the one that I've decorated. <laughs> I, I mean, it's interesting looking at the film because mm. it's filmed in the outback, miles from everywhere. Mm. You're living in a shipping container surrounded <laughs> by flies. I mean, it sounds hell, but you quite liked it. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, literally, it's funny as like as I've gotten older. I mean, my that aspect, just having having anonymity, it's very difficult to realize how how valuable <laughs> anonymity is. I mean, uh, just walking down the street and not worrying about stuff um, is so unbelievably important and. Uh, it doesn't matter about anything else. You don't need anything else. <laughs> like, you didn't have much else by the sounds of it nothing, out there. Really, yeah, but just being able to stand and just, you know, looking in hundreds of miles around you and just like, just knowing that you're, you, you're, uh, uh, you're doing what you want to do <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, no, and no one's witnessing it. You can be yourself. Uh, it's like, it's amazing. Was that exhilarating in a way? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy out there. I mean, I, I would literally, I, would, I think it'd be different if you didn't have a crew around. I was thinking about staying for another week after this and then realizing like, I think it'd be a different situation yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have everyone with me. It starts to look a bit strange. <laughs> yeah, so like you're really alone. <laughs> like, but um, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, it was great shooting out there. Mm. And I mean, in in some ways, it's obviously huge film stars. It's always been the way that there are fans obsessively seeking you out. But do you think social media, in a sense? has made that very much worse. Someone spots you and within minutes it's hundreds and thousands of people in your case probably know where you are. Um, yeah, it definitely changed things. When Twitter became big, they like, used to be able to kind of be all right and then like, it's like no matter what you do. Like, and the camera phones as well, that have changed everything. Um, yeah, it kind of really, really markedly changed things. And I suppose you were saying about earlier on about how vitriolic people are when you complain about it or, or when you talk about it. Um, I suppose the argument is that you make a lot of money and it's the price you pay. I know, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, literally, it's like, I think it's just internet people anyway. I'm also not entirely sure if the people who have comments on the internet, if they actually are real people. <laughs> it's just like a, like a machine that makes them. So I don't know anyone who's ever done a comment on anything on the internet. But Do you like, avoid reading it now? Oh, no, it's, no, it's impossible not to. I mean, literally, if someone's whispering about you in the next room, you're going to listen to it. But uh, at the same time, you kind of... I'm not trying to change anyone's opinion, particularly, and which is what I've realised over the years. It's just like, I don't care. I mean, it's sort of... I mean, you care what people are saying, but really, you don't want... After someone said that, you don't actually want them to like you anyway. <laughs> it's just kind of... You just want to judge them back. And you've had to live out sort of break up of a big relationship in mm. public. Uh, I mean, did that make it worse? Or is, did that really not matter? No, I mean, it's just kind of... Um, yeah, you, it's all the same. It's like, it, it's, your, it's your reality is so detached from that. It's a totally different situation. The, o the only um, connection which it has to reality is when like a, a story's happening, whatever, there are just more paparazzi around. And so it's um, higher intensity. But there's no... Like, no one knows anything about you, really. I mean, it's just... And I've, I've tr tried really hard to make that... Um, to make it that separation between my, my, li my real life and my kind of public persona. Because of trying to, you know, keep out of being hounded down the road. Mm. I mean, it sounds like you stay in a lot. <laughs> Is it lonely? I mean, I don't really stay in a lot, but, like, there are... There, I just go to places where like don't allow photographs and stuff, because that's it really. I mean, if people are just talking about things, then it doesn't matter. It's like, it's like it's all just made up. It's just it's lit there are just a few places in LA which just genuinely don't allow photographs, and you and just go there. You talk about how it would be difficult to live here, mm. but you've also said in the past that you know you like people who make things, and mm. that is very difficult in England. You know, friends of yours have had to give up because it's so difficult. What do you mean? It's by expensive. That? I mean, that's, that, I think that's why, I mean, that's why I kind of noticed, um, uh, you know, a lot of my friends are doing music and stuff, and that there's just a, I guess, it, it, I mean, it's only really about, like, the entertainment industry. If you're, if you're in LA, every time you go out, there's, like, there's someone who's, it, it's just happened, it's just something's happening, whereas, you know, the, just the industry is so much smaller in, in London, and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's so expensive to like put on a gig or do anything. It's like it's just difficult to get the ball rolling. I mean, that's what I found when I when I was. I mean, I haven't been it like for a significant amount of time for like six years now. So maybe it's different. But um, I did notice that when I was there, and it's sad because I remember when I was eighteen. And maybe it's changing again. But I remember when I was eighteen, there was an energy and like things seemed like it, there was you could do things. But then a few years later, it's sudden, it, like, it just got so expensive that no one can live in, you can get a flat or anything. But do you think it stifles creativity here? A hundred percent. I mean, that's like, like, I remember, I mean, whenever there's a new, like, even in like East London now, East London, like, I remember when I was 18, 19, you lived there being an art student or something, and now it's just like, you need flats, like, a millions of pounds. <laughs> I mean, everything's millions of pounds. I mean, I don't know, maybe I just, maybe I just don't know where the, uh, the cool arty areas are now. Thanks very much for joining us, Rob. Thanks a lot. Thank you.